everybody. Today is the official release of Plasticity 1.3. This is a super exciting release. Obviously, the flagship feature is the Blender Bridge, which I have talked about in detail before. I'm going to focus in this video on some of the other uh, more minor but still really exciting features in this release. Um, but first, I want to talk about a tiny bit of nuance related to the Blender Bridge. Uh, there's a lot of documentation in our manual, uh, but just to help you get started. First of all, you need to download the Blender add-on from the GitHub page, and you can download the zip and install the add-on in Blender the same way you would with any other add-on. So, And also, you will need to go into the Plasticity Preferences and enable the bridge. It's off by default because it is a network service, and just to err on the side of caution, you know, software like mine should ship with network services disabled. Now with the Blender add-on uh, installed and the server on, you should be able to connect. And then the first thing you can do is hit the refresh button. And this will bring um, a rapid version of the scene, of the entire scene um, into Plasticity really quickly. If you only wanna see uh, visible objects, you can do that. Now it's important to know that the way that this is so fast is it's just slurping in the raw data from Plasticity. You can use this to do renders, but it's not suitable really for UV unwrapping. So you will want to refacet objects um, before you you know use any of these utilities to UV unwrap or do any more downstream modeling operations like exporting for game ready assets or something like that. So okay, with that out of the way, I want to talk about a feature that. Uh, I really enjoy personally. This was, this is actually thanks to uh, one of our users who posted a link to a paper that had a really elegant algorithm for this. So planar edges, that is edges between planar faces, can now just be moved in like a really uh, straightforward way. And it's not quite like poly modeling, you can see that it maintains the planarity of faces by doing stuff that uh, it's not like mo moving the edge or a vertex in a polygonal modeling program, but it still feels very natural. And it's great for blocking out uh, mechanical parts and mechanical looking parts, especially like early on when there's no fillets. And you can even do uh, really cool things where, you know, if you insert an edge, you can sort of, you know, uh, move it directly. So this is a super cool feature uh, and thanks to a user suggestion for the most part. Um, now this release uh, also features a new option for fillets that is uh, really commonly requested. Um, so for example, when you make a fillet like this, you'll notice that there is uh, like a distant, a difference between the width here and the width here. In fact, this surface has a constant radius and this is what a typical machined fillet or blend would look like um, depending on the manufacturing process. But sometimes we consider these kinds of edges to be uh, not very aesthetic. So you can create now chordal or constant width fillets, um, edge fillets, and uh, you can do that with more complicated edge chains than with the bridge surface uh, command, which does support chordal fillets as well. But that should help getting um, slightly more aesthetic fillets and more detailed industrial designy looking assets. Now, this release is focused is much on kind of basic quality of life stuff um, and not just advanced modeling features and things like the Blender Bridge. So for example, Plasticity has a totally new sort of isolation system. So what I mean by that is you can select some objects and isolate them. And you'll notice it says isolated up here. If you select some objects within that subset, you can isolate even further and you can see there's sort of a stack of isolated objects. And you can pop out of that stack one at a time till you get back to your original scene. And this operates independently of all the kind of visibility uh, and other modifiers in the outliner. This is inspired by um, 
machine tools or mesh machine, I always forget which one is which, but it's like really great when you're working on detailed mechanical parts where you ju can just kind of zoom in multiple levels and back out and back in um, and keep this sort of stack in your head. And so let's talk about the outliner now. There's been a ton of enhancements. You'll notice first of all that like objects that are created have these kinds of helpful names. So for example, I have a circle. If I extrude it, it's an extruded body. If I sweep or loft something, they're given kind of nice tentative names to help keep things organized before you start naming things yourself. Now, there's a lot of additional uh, grouping functionality that is super useful now. Um, for example, uh, let me nest some groups just for simplicity's sake. So if you right click, uh, click on a group, there's all these helpful tools to expand everything, collapse every, all, all things. Um, you can, for example, if these are you know, not in this group, I can select them, right click on this group, um, add the current selection to that group. And so there's just a lot of things that used to take 20 clicks before, and now it's much simpler. And along those lines, you can now pro uh, perform mass actions on items in the outliner. So as a quick example, if I shift click to select all these and then double click, I can rename all of them at once. I'm gonna call this uh, circular feature. And so it will give all of them the same name with some unique numbers, and you know, you can, basically do any um, outliner behavior on multiple bodies. So for example, you can show and hide all objects at once. And you can apply material to multiple objects at once. Um, another highly requested feature um, is radial menus. And so now Plasticity has yeah. the ability to create customized radial menus. So. Uh, radial menu looks like this. For example, this radial menu has like the selection settings here, so control point, solid, edge, face. Now, the interesting thing, the, it, way, it works in the way you expect. If you, this is bound to the letter Z in this particular case. If you type Z and then you click, or you can hold down Z and just gesture really quickly and let go of the key to select. Um, you know, plasticity is a very key binding heavy application, partly because of the influence of Blender and also just me as a programmer, uh, I like key bindings a lot, but there's a lot of uh, people who like use tablets or they just have better sort of spatial memory than let's say character memory. And you can make uh, these, these radial menus really simply um, by adding in a simple JSON format. And, and yeah. Uh, now, last but certainly not least in these kinds of quality of life improvements that will really remove friction from the plasticity experience, plasticity supports creating multiple windows now. So each window is its own document, okay? And um, what you can do that's really compelling with this feature is you can use the place command to move objects from one document to another and place them really rapidly. So if you recall the place command, if you select an object and type control D, you can select a pivot to place things around and then uh, you can just sort of really quickly do a kind of like rapid kit bashing workflow and decorate objects in a way that, you know, is kind of fun and cool, but now, if you want to move an object that you built, like uh, something kit bashable, a bolt, a pivot, a, a screw, that sort of that sort of thing, you can um, type Control C, Control V to move to copy from one document to another. But also, you can use Control Shift C, okay, select the pivot, okay, and then move into the new document. Zoom out a bit, and Control Shift V will move that body into this document and it works you know, just like the place command where you can scale things and move things and kit bash them really rapidly. And, and yeah, and that is uh, you know, something that is very basic but at the same time, it's gonna unlock a lot of productivity gains in kit bashing because you can have these 
you know, documents with lots of these like reusable parts and then just open them in a new window and kind of copy and paste or place them into the document that you're actively working on. Okay, so that's it for today. There are probably another 10 or so minor features and of course dozens of bug fixes in this release. Um, there will be release notes and, and there has been plenty of documentation in the Discord so far where you can ask questions. And then of course everything is also in the documentation at doc.plasticity.xyz. Thank you.